cartoons and animation are essential to Hollywood. Cartoons have brought about new ideas, new forms of entertainment, and more. Cartoons and animation have shaped our world in more ways than we could possibly ever imagine. Starting way back in 1877 to the present day, this is the story of animation. to go far back into actually American history as the Civil War is going on. In 1877, we started seeing the first official cartoons as they were these drawings made for political cartoons, political propaganda. They were shown in the newspaper and would usually slam other opponents. Now, this is a theme that we will actually see prevail on later. As you see, most of these cartoons were hand-drawn and featured in the newspapers. They were to demonstrate the state of America and, as I said already, slam some opponents. The artist behind these cartoons was Thomas Nast, or at least he was the one to start it all. So we could refer to Thomas as the father of all cartoons and animation overall. Now, political cartoons carried on throughout the years, but it wasn't until the 20th century that cartoons had become animated. You see, in 1900, newspaper cartoonists J. Stuart Blackton and Winsor McKay both made a cartoon, The Enchanted Drawing. Now this was a silent film, not only was this the first animated cartoon, it was also the very first cartoon to use both humans and cartoons on a screen. Now, granted, this cartoon was one that had limited animators. Sadly, on December 7th, 1902, the father of American cartoons himself, Thomas Nast, had sadly passed away. Going back to J. Stuart Blackton, on April 6, 1906, he released Humor's Phases of Funny Faces, which had more animation in it opposed to the enchanted drawing. Humor's Phases is regarded as the first ever animated cartoon since this was the first cartoon released in the United States. Now, in Japan, a new form of animation by the name of anime had begun. This had been estimated to start in the early 1900s, but the earliest confirmed piece of anime is Chicago Mien no Shippai. In 1919, the first well-known cartoon appeared, Felix the Cat, and even today, he's a pop culture icon. In the 1920s, we really start to see the cartoons pick up and become revolutionary. Take, for example, Walt Disney. Now, Walt was born on December 5th, 1901 in Chicago, Illinois, but in 1923, the Walt Disney Company was created. Walt didn't start with Mickey Mouse or even Oswald the Lucky Rabbit at the time. Instead, Walt did what Walt always does, which is push the boundaries of Hollywood. Of course, Walt was one of the original cartoonists, but he did something incredible. In 1923, Walt worked with Laffo Graham to make Alice's Wonderland, this cartoon was both animated and live action. Now, unlike the Enchanted Drawing, this animated cartoon had a human actually immersed in a cartoon world. That human was Alice. The practice of humans and cartoons would later be revived in the 1960s with Disney's Mary Poppins. Going back in time a bit, on March 2nd, 1904, in Springfield, Massachusetts, Theodore Giselle better known as Dr. Seuss, was born. In 1927, Dr. Seuss started his cartoons in the comics. Now, Seuss had some political cartoons, much like those from the 1870s. Some of Dr. Seuss's earlier comics, those have been attempted to be canceled. But November 18, 1928 would mark one of the most important days in all of cartoon history and animation, even just the history of cinema. Prior to 1928, cartoons didn't have any sound, and if they did, it would be music. No actual voice acting or sound effects, none of that. All that changed, though, on November 18, 1928. 
Steamboat Willie debuted in the theaters. Now the world was introduced to Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, and Pete the Cat. Walt then continued this in 1929 with the Skeleton Dance, which was released on August 22nd. This Skeleton Dance would actually be the first of many of what Walt called Silly Symphonies. Over the next year, Silly Symphonies took off and were introduced to characters like Donald Duck and the Wise Little Hen through these Silly Symphonies. But Disney wasn't the only one making waves in the cartoon industry. In 1930, a short called Dizzy Dishes premiered and it featured Betty Boop. Over the years, we know that Betty Boop becomes a massive pop culture icon that everybody recognizes somewhat like Felix the Cat and Mickey Mouse. In this same year, the first ever Warner Bros. Looney Tunes cartoon would hit, Singing in the Bathtub. Now, it wouldn't actually feature any of the Looney Tunes characters that we know today. In 1932, that would mark the end of the black and white era. Walt Disney did it again with Flowers and Trees to be the next biggest silly symphony, which would actually introduce us to the colorized cartoons. The days of the black and white Mickey Mouse and Betty Boop were over. Color was now something that the animators knew how to work with in film. RKO Pictures and Warner Brothers came together to create the first film to feature stop motion in a realistic way, King Kong. Now, King Kong did hit theaters in March 2nd, 1933. King Kong primarily focused on the people, but of course the big reason that people went to go see it was King Kong since he himself was stop motion and at that time it looked a little bit realistic. In this same year, a short by the name of Popeye the Sailor would debut. This actually was under Betty Boop cartoon, but the world would see yet another cartoon icon, Popeye. Warner Bros. still had some strong successes in 1935 with Porky Pig given his debut in I Haven't Got a Hat. His short film was using colored animation much like Flowers and Trees did. In 1937, Walt achieved two massive things. The first is a short film titled The Old Mill. A 3D effect was used with Disney's multiplane camera giving us a new look at how animation could be. Prior to this, everything was just 2D and kind of linear. Now there was 3D animation, and it wasn't like Toy Story, but you could still have some more realistic looking features, and the cartoons kind of came to life. But the bigger thing happened on December 21st, 1937. Two things actually happened in the world of cartoons. One was the premiere of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. This would become the first ever full-length animated feature film. This film debuted on theaters all across America and even the world. Walt got an honorary Oscar for this. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs wasn't just an achievement for animation, it was an achievement for Hollywood and cinema overall. This film is groundbreaking and redefined the industry. I mean, look at Hollywood now. We see cartoons in 3D animation now, and those are blockbuster films. If it wasn't for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, we would not have all that. The days of hand-drawn animation is almost fully over, with the exception of a few films nowadays. But because of Snow White's success, it showed Hollywood to actually start investing in cartoons and not just do live action. The second biggest thing, though, was Dr. Seuss actually getting into children's books and publishing, and to think I saw it on Mulberry Street, which would skyrocket his career of being a critically acclaimed children's author. 